The first step to reading a candlestick chart is learning to interpret what candles are saying. Now today, I'm going to break this down for you in an easy cliff note style fashion. And after this video, you'll be able to hear their secret warnings and what advice they have to share about future price action. So forget about memorizing patterns. Well, that is so 18th century. Let's do it an easier way. Hello again and welcome back to Crypto Chart School here on the Road Dog Crypto channel. Just to make sure that we're on the same page, let me clarify that I am not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy on the internet teaching technical analysis to anyone who wants to learn how to be successful in crypto and in other markets. Now let's look at this gorgeous chart. This one right here on TradingView. It's the Bitcoin chart which you will come to know very intimately because all things crypto revolve around the health and activity of this chart. So where better to begin than right here? You probably noticed that there are all these red and green vertical lines that seem to either meander along in sideways action or jump quickly up or down. Some even have skinnier lines coming out of the top and bottoms. Now these overall lines are commonly called candles and candles give us a lot of information about how the market is reacting to price. The cool thing about candles is that they string together over time and they form repeatable patterns. And learning to recognize and identify those patterns are the keys to profits. Now you may have seen trend lines drawn connecting candle tops and bottoms that end forming shapes like triangles or channels. Now we call these chart patterns. You may also have seen two or three candles together with a cryptic title like bullish abandoned baby or dark cloud cover. And these are something different called Japanese candlestick patterns. Rather than finding an overall shape, we're looking at how these individual candles relate to each other in a two or three candle move. Now, as you can imagine, that's a lot to memorize over time. However, there's a much easier way to read these candles and today I'm going to break that down for you. Each of these candles document what has happened in price action during a specific time frame. That time frame is determined by the overall time frame you choose to analyze on your chart, whether it be the four hour chart, the daily chart, the weekly chart. For instance, if you choose a daily chart for longer term trades, each candle will represent 24 hours. If you choose a 15 minute chart for shorter term trades, then each candle will represent 15 minutes. Now, while we're on the subject, charting larger time frames such as the daily and the four hour are great for showing the predominant trend and they're good for longer term trades. While the smaller time frames like the five minute or the 15 minute have more noise and more irrelevant information to sort through, but they are well suited for shorter term trades. You may be wondering, why do candles look so different from each other? Well, I like your curiosity and to answer that, we need to dissect a candle and learn its anatomy. So when a new candle begins its life, let's say on a one hour chart, the first price recorded is the open price. Now, as minutes pass, the price moves and let's say it moves downward and let's say it flips and the price goes up. It now passes the open price and it reaches a peak and now it moves down to a certain point just when the hour is finishing. Now this final price is called the candle close price. Now this candle will give us five pieces of data. We have the open price, we have the close price, we also have the high that the price reached, and we have the low that the price reached. Now finally, candles always come in two flavors. We have the very tasty bullish green candles and and then often the bitter tasting bearish red ones. Now the green ones like to float toward the top and the red ones like to sink toward the bottom. Well, what determines if a candle is green or red? Well, look at you asking all the right questions. It depends on if the candle close is above or below the original open price. If the close is above the open price, it is bullish and therefore a green candle. However, if the candle closes below the open price, then it's bearish and it will be red. So let's look at how a red candle works so that you can see how both colors actually operate. Here we have an open, a close, we have a high and a low. But now this time price open and it ran up. Then it ran down to close at a lower price than it had begun. So this candle will be red and it will document a downward trend. And that's not my personal favorite. But here's a helpful tip. When you hover your cursor over a candle, the precise data will be shown on the screen here. And this will make the price as a lot easier for you to see quickly. Now today I'll be giving you the cliff note versions on Japanese candlesticks, meaning that I'll share the basics of interpreting them and review some of the strongest and most effective candlestick formations that you can begin applying to your chart analysis immediately. Later on, I plan to release a more advanced video which goes into more details on specific Japanese candlestick patterns. And later I'll also release videos that go over chart patterns formed by trend lines. While there are many traders who use Japanese candlesticks as their main form of technical analysis, especially those who trade in Forex or the foreign exchange currency market, I mostly use them as a means for confirmation to help me identify possible trend changes. 
like when Bitcoin decides to stop going up and it starts going down, for example. Now, if you find that reading Japanese candlesticks resonates with you and you'd like to learn more about them, there are several good books on Amazon by seasoned candlestick traders like Steve Nyson or Alexander Smith. PDFdrive.com often has free editions available for download as well. Now, let's get on with the Cliff Note version of how to read candles easel. So first we're going to talk about the wick. Now the wick is the smaller line that is either on the top or the bottom of the body of the candle. The body is the wider, thicker part. The wick is the skinny line that may or may not be sticking out of the top or bottom of that candle. Top wicks show selling pressure, while bottom wicks show buying pressure. When you see a group of candles with a lot of top wicks, is a strong indication that the price may soon break downward. Now, this is especially true after an uptrend and at a strong point of resistance at the top. A group of candles with bottom wicks indicates that the price may soon break upward, especially after a downtrend or at a strong point of support. Wicks show a sign of rejection and a potential reversal. Wicks are also signs of exhaustion, whether it's coming from the buyer or the seller side. And wicks show buyers or sellers losing control over the momentum. Long upper wicks can be an indicator of a bearish trend, meaning that investors are likely looking to sell and take profit. The longer the wick, the stronger the trend. Long lower wicks can be a bullish signal indicating that investors are looking to buy, thereby driving prices upward. The longer the wick, the more reliable the signal. The next candle we're going to look at is something called a doji. Now this is a special candle and it has lots of cousins that are very similar to it and kind of have the same effect. So with a doji, sometimes candles don't have a body. Sometimes they look like a plus sign or a cross or maybe even the letter T. Now these are known as indecision candles and we call these indecision candles doji. If we didn't, they'd never answer us. Now, the reason dojis are the cool kids on the block is because they can help you sniff out a trend reversal ahead of time if you find them in the right places. Otherwise, they can sometimes bore you to tears. So where are those magical hangout spots for the doji? They are at the major support and resistance areas. If we're at a top and a doji pops up, chances are we'll go down soon. If price finds a bottom and a doji steps into the picture, chances are things are getting ready to turn around toward the upside. Now, another type of candle we're gonna look at is a hammer. Hammers have distinctively long bottom wicks and often mean that the asset is experiencing some serious buy action and that the price may soon be trending upward. Hammers often form at the end of a downtrend and can signal a possible reversal to the upside. The wicks indicate that buyers have absorbed all the selling pressure that occurred during this time. Another formation that's worth taking a look at are called tweezer tops and tweezer bottoms is a green candle with a long top wick immediately followed by a red candle also with a long top wick, often of equal wick lengths. Now this signifies reversal to the downside after this forms. Now look for these on long candles after a strong breakout of a pattern. They occur at strong levels of support or resistance. Tweezer bottoms are just the opposite. They're red candles with a long bottom wick that are immediately followed by a similar green candle also with a long bottom wick. Now these indicate a reversal to the upside. We've just finished interpreting what wicks mean. Now we're going to take a little closer look at candle bodies. Candle bodies also help us read price action as well. Now we have short bodies and long bodies. Short bodies typically indicate sideways price action and indecision as bulls and bears try to determine which direction a price will go. Short body candles can indicate that the price may be trying to reverse direction soon. Short bodies with long wicks show more volatility in price action than short bodies with short wicks. Now let's talk about long bodies. Now, long bodies indicate the health of the market. Healthy, strong candles have long, full bodies and often small or even no wicks. Now, a good example is the momentum candle, which is usually easy to identify since they are normally two to three times longer than most candles on the chart. When you see one of these, it's a good sign that more action in that direction is on its way soon. This is especially true if they are formed after a period of sideways price movement. The longer the bodies of a candle, the more strength and momentum toward the current trend. Long bodies with short or no wicks show strength in the trend to continue. Now, engulfing candles are another candle to be on the look for as they are long candles that follow shorter candles at a strong support or resistance area. An engulfing candle is an excellent momentum shape which can lead to strong directional movement immediately after it forms. You will recognize them in your support and resistance levels, especially after a balance or a price reversal. If you see a candle where the body can fit over or engulf the previous candle, you found one. Bullish engulfing candles form as buyers outpace sellers and are reflected in the charts by a long green candle engulfing a smaller red candle. This means that if the engulfing candles were in a box, the red candle would easily fit inside it. This signals that the bulls are taking back control and price could trend higher. 
Now, bearish engulfing candles are the opposite. They typically are found at or near the tops of uptrends at stronger resistance areas. A red engulfing candle will follow a shorter green candle, and often it indicates that sellers are regaining control and will soon drive prices lower. The Mari Bozo candle has no upper or lower wicks. The low was the same as the open and the close was the same as the top. Now these are very bullish and a strong sign that buyers are in control of the market and that further upside can be expected. Maru Bozu candles can have either no wicks at all or one wick. Now considered to be a very strong signal that price will continue in the same direction, Maru Bozu candles can either be bullish or bearish. Bullish Maru Bozu candles show that the buying interest was so strong that there was no price pullback during that time prices only went up. However, bearish Maribozu candles show that selling pressure was strong and had no strength to fight against the downward price action. Now, rather than trying to commit a huge number of these Japanese candlestick patterns to memory, I recommend focusing on the wicks and bodies in areas of strong support or resistance. Over time, it will become much easier to recognize possible reversal or continuation groupings of two or three candles known as candle formations, or candlestick patterns. Now, there are a lot of traders in the market that utilize these price patterns to predict price action. Now, examples of common Japanese patterns are readily available with a simple Google search or visiting a site like investopedia.com. Several books are available online by the authors I mentioned earlier. So if you find that this style resonates with you and would like to learn more, I'll be happy to make a more detailed video covering the most common and successful candlestick patterns. Please just request it in the comments below if you'd like that. Now, my personal trading system only uses Japanese patterns for confirmations and con influence for larger patterns formed by trend lines. Now, even though it is often helpful and impressive to call out a particular pattern, such as three black crows or three white soldiers, just interpreting the bodies and the wicks at possible tops and bottoms works beautifully. Now, my personal preference in candle styles is actually the Heiken Ashi style, which is just a little bit different, but easier to read as it negates a lot of the confusing noise regular candles are known for. Now, I will cover Heiken Ashi candles and how to use them in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that as well. Until next time, I'm Lane, your Crypto Road Dog, signing off. Be blessed, my friends, and don't stress it. You've got this. Road dog crypto. Road dog crypto.